I only have one thing to say. And my voice isn't going to stay like this forever. So I'm going to tell you something. I can bring you in warm. Or I can bring you in cold. How good was that? Chilly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. I thought you guys were going to be mean to me about it. But, you know, no. I was like, I was fully waiting. I was like, I was like clinching. I was like, oh, they're going to be mean. Like, <laughs> Oh, we weren't know? talking about you. We were actually talking about the moment. If you want to talk oh, about yeah. You, I thought you were different. talking about the show. Th- that's oh, a different story. Oh, okay. Okay. How much Whatever. time do you have? Rewind Whatever. the show. I got more to say. No, I'll, give, I'll give you a six for that. A six. That's bad. That's a D. That's a, that is a, that is a failing grade, amigo. <laughs> anyway. I think that's going to be the best grade you get on that one, Gabe. Yeah. Kind of I mean, things, it's pretty good when you're not wearing any best gar at all. So yeah. I mean, that really helps True. to complete that whole mood. and no voice effects. True. I mean, I was pretty proud of it, and it sounded way cooler <laughs> in my mind than it did to you guys, apparently. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> gentlemen, welcome to the show, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the audience. Welcome back. Uh, this is the Wannabe Critic Podcast tonight. We're going to be talking about the Book of Boba Fett, Chapter Five, which is entitled "The Return of the Mandalorian." And boy, oh boy, oh boy, what an episode we had. But before we get before we get into it, we are going to catch up a little bit. Tonight I have with me one Ryan Dalton, one Elijah Middlesworth, and one Jake Labriere. Uh guys, how are we feeling tonight? Good. Real good. Yeah, pretty good. Just good, because I'm feeling amazing. Hey, okay, I'll I'll tell you what. If you guys can guess how many beverages I have. I will relinquish my hosting privileges for this episode. Four. Um, five. Too bad I was crossing my fingers, Jake. <laughs> oh. I, would, I would never give up my power to you, ever. Don't you ever forget it. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say anything because I don't want to host. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that would have been funny. That would have been a better a better move. would have been like, all right, Jake, take it away. And Jake would have been like, uh, 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 uh. No, I'm just kidding. Just joking. Well, neat. <laughs> um. Well, I'm sure we all have something to contribute to what we've been up to tonight. So, Ryan, let's start with you. Uh, what's been going on? What's new in your world? Uh, well, I am all promo all the time. Um, my uh, my next book comes out in less than a week. A few people are actually already getting their copies. They're arriving early. I have uh, mine. Which, yeah, which is kind of fun. And uh, so, yeah, the, whole, the book launch event, uh, which is a virtual event, but um, it's through, it's uh, with a, a bookstore that is supporting me since the beginning so i always try to do my launches with them but that's that's happening on uh the evening of february 1st and um yeah i i am super jazzed to, to have this book out in the world it's been a long journey an extra long one since covid delayed publication um a, a few seasons and so uh yeah I, I am ready to have this out there you've been talking about this for a long time man we're, we're i know it's been, since yeah. i first started on the podcast i've been talking about it. i promise yeah. it's coming and, and it's here yeah i remember there be there was a couple of times like uh, we would have a show and I think like there might've been a few times where we mixed up the times or something. And I remember one night, like you were the first one on, you're like, man, I wish I would have known, uh, <laughs> that w- w- we were going to go 30 minutes later or something. Cause like you, you looked visibly angry because it looked like you had probably had to stop like at a, at a core moment in the book. Like you weren't giving away too many details, but I think it's like the only time I've ever seen you legitimately mad. So I'm glad that you don't, <laughs> we don't have to worry about any more of those, um, you know, instances for a while you know now it would just be pure inconvenience be like yeah well whatever man we're late sorry <laughs> like elijah <laughs> elijah's like yeah you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and choose to update my computer tonight um i, I gotta keep you on your toes <laughs> well and going forward it's gonna be different because i've managed to arrange my life so that i'm gonna have going forward a lot more creative time so um i won't have to squeeze every last minute of the day for all its creative potential so if uh, you know if it shows a half hour late yeah I'll be chill. Yeah. yeah, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Because I won't tolerate it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's cool, man. Yeah, we're happy your book's here. Uh, sounds like that's been encompassing most of your time. Unless you yeah, have any yeah. movie or gaming stuff you want to add, we'll move on to Lige. There's nothing of note, so I will step back. Okay, awesome. Lige, what have you been up to? Oh, uh, since last week, not a whole lot. Uh, about the same, catching up on some Minecraft. I actually got back to work this week after being out with COVID last week. So that's a decent change. I'm not bored and lonely in my basement anymore. 
Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much about it. Just playing some Minecraft, some Red Dead here and there. Gabe actually hopped on Red Dead with us not too long ago. I think that was that was last week, wasn't it? I did. It was a, it was a good time. I enjoyed myself. Yeah, yeah. we had a good time. Yeah, until you know what happened was I joined the posse, right? And we were gonna like go bounty hunting or something. Is what I thought was gonna happen. See, I I created my character as female because I like to really role play. So, <laughs> um, you guys were making uh, what I do every time I have the option to be a girl, I make it. I make my character a girl. There's nothing weird about that. Guys, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I usually, I usually make a, the female character, and I usually like make it my wife. But it was funny because in Red Dead Online, you can't make your character like look good. No. So I literally made my character look as ugly as ugly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then I showed Emma. I was like, "Hey, babe, look, I made you," and she's like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's probably more historically uh, accurate than someone who would have been real put together. Yeah, yeah exactly. Probably. Well, she she was like, "Well, you got the curves right at least." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "On per on purpose." No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but we were having a good time doing that. That that uh, like defend the the uh, like the town mode. It was yeah. kind of cool. It made me yeah. feel like I was. Remember open range at the very end when they're like, mm -hmm. that's kind of what, what it reminded me of a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no doubt. That's a dope. Yeah, other than that, not a whole lot. Things have been pretty chill. You inspired me to go out and buy some soda. You're a bad influence. That night you had the, that night you had the Dr Pepper all to yourself. Oh, you know what? The one that good thing about being the only soda drinker in your household, the whole two liter is yours, and you don't have to use a cup. Yep. <laughs> Went out and bought a two liter of Dr. Pepper and a two liter Mountain Dew after that. And I was like, God, that sounds amazing. So <laughs> anyways, I'm glad you're here, Elijah, and I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're alive still. You know, so you, you survived COVID. That makes two of us. That makes three of us, four of us. We've all had COVID. We've all had mm -hmm. COVID and lived yep. and lived. Yep. We need Look shirts. at us. We need shirts. <laughs> my wife can get on. My wife can do that. Um, <laughs> I survived COVID, and all I got was this lousy podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically, I survived COVID, and I still get to put out a podcast that only gets like twenty five lessons per episode. No, I'm just. But kidding. we, but we have the best time making it. We mm -hmm. do, and no honestly, doubt. I was talking to someone. It might have been who was it? Was it you, Leish? Yeah, I was, was saying. Me. I'm pretty sure. I said something like, I would rather have 25 people, 30 people, 40 people listen to this show and consume stuff we make because they genuinely want to, mm -hmm. rather than having an, audi an audience that is non-loyal and artificial. Like, uh, every every time. Every time I would, I would rather have that. So, if you're listening, yeah. thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, enough of that before I cry. Jake, <laughs> <laughs> Jake, what have you been up to? Um... Not a whole lot. Uh, like I said, a lot of Minecraft and finishing up my costume for Fantasy oh. Night. I'm oh, yeah. just about finished making my shield, and uh, then I think I'm good to go. I think I have all my pieces after I make my, finish my shield. So I'm gonna be 100 with you guys. We have we have a a, a Fantasy Night coming up. Me, Jake, and Lige. and I'm gonna be 100 with you guys. I have not even begun production on my costume. Dude, you, got, you have two weeks. I don't know what I'm going to be. I don't know what I'm going to be. Elijah said you're not invited if you don't have a costume. Yeah. I'm pretty sure by Friday, uh, January 29th. Is that tomorrow? 29th, 28th. I'm pretty sure I said by January 28th. If you don't have your costume, you're not invited anymore. All right. Well, I guess me and Emma aren't going. She doesn't have <laughs> no, her Emma's invited. Either. Emma doesn't have her costume either. Emma doesn't have her costume That's either. Fine, I though. didn't she give her a deadline. I gave one. you a deadline. Yeah. I hate you both. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That, what else, Jake? Is that it? Yep, that's about it. Boring. <laughs> You're boring. You don't have a costume. I don't want to hear yeah. it. <laughs> Dave's going to come as the friar. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually considering yeah. it. Like that Oliver, would be, that'd be like, pretty sweet. An Oliver Tree. Oliver Tree yeah. friar. Um I'll just come go buy in a there. potato sack and throw it over your head. I might. I just might do that, actually, and only wear that. No, I'm just I, I have one of the Drizzit to Worden swords if you want to borrow it. <laughs> you just got to come get it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I've, I've been wrestling as to whether or not I want to be. Like, Elijah's already a ranger. Mm -hmm. Jake is like a berserker. So, I don't know. I was thinking about being like a – I'm thinking about coming as a bard, to be honest with you. 
I thought that would be a really good fit for you too. Yeah, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about trying because I feel like that'd be relatively easy to find clothing for and stuff like a bard, a bard um, cape and stuff like that and like a, a harp prop, you know, something like that. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not telling you what I'm what I'm coming as until the t- until the party happens. So you well, can't that's why wanna... I haven't shown you pictures of my costume yet because I don't want you to see what I look like. Whatever, quit trying to copy me. No. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding all right gentlemen let's get into the to the review of the episode we made good time we caught up in 12 minutes look at us go Woo, so voice. um chapter five of book of boba fett ladies and gentlemen we are going to spoil this hard i mean we already basically spoiled a, a good chunk of it in the outset of the episode so but i mean everything if you don't want to be spoiled last chance i don't think i've said that the past four episodes but i'm saying it now So chapter five is called the return of the Mandalorian, I believe is what it's called. And man, oh man, this was like in my top five favorite Star Wars things I think I've ever consumed. Um, uh, The plot's pretty simple. I mean, we, me, me, Jake and Lies were talking about this last weekend or last week, like, which actually props to Jake because Jake made a prediction that is 100% going to come true with the the ruin of Mandalore. So that's going to happen at some point, maybe not in this, in this series. Um, and I want, I want to go through our predictions from last week. So we taught, we all agreed that Mando is going to be showing up. Um, Jake predicted that we would be going back to Mandalore. Were there any other predictions that I missed? That were uh, correct. That were correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think so. Cool. So tonight what I want us to do is we're going to, you know, well, actually, I need to finish the synopsis first. So Din Djarin, he's trying to basically find a ship, um, do his thing. He he finds the, uh, the, the other two Mandalorians and reveals that he has taken his helmet off, which then he's kind of like excommunicated, which is going to require him to go back to Mandalore. He whips out the Darksaber and fights... Uh, Paz Vizsla was his name, right? Which we know if you've watched Clone Wars, you know the Vizsla clan, like they had the dark saber. So that's a really big deal. Um, and then we go to Tatooine where Mando then gets a new ship, which is pretty awesome. We'll go into that little bit of detail and he is going to make his reconvening happen with Boba Fett so that they can go to war with the Pikes. Did I miss anything as the general synopsis? Those are the high points. Yeah. Yeah, yep. those are those are the main the main plot points. So there's a lot to dissect though. So I want us to do is I want us to pick, you know, like we did last week, pick one thing you liked, one thing you weren't crazy about, and then we'll talk about uh, predictions and stuff after we've kind of gone through those. Because I'm sure we, you know we'll probably all hit a few different things, but it kind of gives us each a chance to kind of have the the floor for what we want to say. Um, I'm gonna kick us off, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a small one. So. The fact that we saw BD-1, or, at the, you know, the BD unit, got me so excited. Like, I was legitimately, like, I, I felt like butterflies. I was like, Cal? Like, I was like, mm-hmm. he, which if you think about it, if he's here, he'd be in his 40s at this point. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, that was one thing I really, really liked seeing was them kind of like crossing those universes over. Um, does anyone want to add? I mean, does anyone have any banter to add to that? I mean, what do you guys think? You think Cal's going to show up, or you think it's just coincidence? I, I think it's just a coincidence. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of BD units, and that was just a good homage to the game, in my opinion. Is there? Is there a lot of BD units though? He's the only one we've. Seen and this one was old and kind of beat up. Um, you, you never know; it could just be an Easter egg, or, or, or it's probably just an Easter egg, even even if they did intend it to be actually BD one. And it, it is interesting that I didn't even particularly enjoy that game, um, but even I was like, "Hey, it's B, it's BD." So even I was like, "Oh, that that's a cool thing they threw." Which in. that's a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's, it is good. Like. That, yeah, it was like, subtle. It, they didn't cram it down your throat, and it, they didn't make it weird. It was just there, and if you know what it is, you know what it is. Yeah, I, I, I just, I really love that. Jake, got anything you wanted to add to that? So I actually, I haven't, because that's from Fallen Order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually haven't played that game, and Elijah actually kind of explained it to me today. So I thought, I thought it was neat once he told me, but 
I'm going to have to play that game. I still haven't played it. Yeah, it's uh, just make it past the first three hours and you're golden and play it on easy. But anyways, Yeah, play it on easy. Yeah. Um, but no, that was one thing I really, really liked. Okay, I want to talk about the thing, and maybe this is one thing that we all are, can agree on that we may not like. The mechanic, she was better in this episode, but I gen- I generally find her pretty irritating. <laughs> um, um, I, that, that's Amy Sedaris. She's a comedic genius. I think they're yeah. lucky to have her. Sorry, I didn't even know who she was. <laughs> I mean, she, you know, I mean, we, people when they first meet me, they're like, "Wow, that guy's an idiot." Maybe I'm just <laughs> missing. Still, maybe see, my, we still do though, Gabe. It's, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> that hurts me. My. <laughs> My first thought with with her in this episode was because I liked her in all the other and the what it was first two seasons of Mando we've had mm-hmm. so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked her, and in this episode, I actually was trying to decide. I was like, man, I don't know if this like fits very well. And then the longer that scene went on, I was like, no, I I like her. She does a really really good job at and. I mean, I guess part of that's writing, but she does good with being humorous and it still feels like Star Wars, but it's like also maybe bringing something new to Star Wars comedy wise. I think she does good with it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think she's a a good kind of almost like a microcosm of what the show shows do well. They give you enough Star Wars to feel. It, like it's familiar you know like you're going back to that kind of that old original trilogy feel but at the same time it's like they're also treating it like okay this is a, a new era and this there's an entire galaxy most of which have never been explored and that includes different types of people as well so i like that they're also allowing room for that yeah and i'm, I'm not like i don't hate her i just she just kind of irritates me a little bit like me and my wife both were kind of like yeah she's like I said, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, yeah, I'm, well, I'm just not like, I don't know, maybe just the, the delivery doesn't land with me the way it should, I don't know. But I don't, like I said, I don't hate her. It's nice that Mando has an, a, a colorful ally, you know, like that, because it would be, you know, I, I, I guess I could say anyone else would be boring. I think the only thing that would have been cooler if it would have been like Watto or something, you know, that yeah. Din Djarin had teamed up with. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, that think about it. Like, uh, Watto's still alive. Yeah. Dan, good to see you, my boy. You know, like, <laughs> uh, I just hurt my throat just then. <laughs> Anyways, all right, someone else's turn. Uh, Ryan, why don't you go? One thing you liked, one thing maybe you weren't too crazy about. Um, <clears throat> boy, I mean the 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 entrance of the Mandalorian Mandalorian before you I didn't look at the title of the episode before we played it so when like the door opened and he was first there in that just awesome armor it was like oh okay so this is what and to me just that opening moment was like all right this feels good like that that moment was like to me cemented and even not that it needed cemented but even cemented that it's like okay this character is like like a legit Star Wars legend at this point now. They've successfully made him, I think, probably the most popular character in probably 20 years. Um, and uh, at least as far as like in, um, you know, in the like film and TV and the media. Um, and I just loved that moment. Like that, that you get that little charge. It's like, okay, this is going to be cool. Um, yeah, I really liked that. I, I wanted to kind of like set something up for later like i want to talk about what you just said about him being legendary and we're going to kind of talk about like the future of what this character looks like and some things that are probably going to have to happen in star wars if this character is going to continue to be the legend that he is so we'll kind of save that till later but i agree with you 100 percent. like that opening sequence i was like oh welcome back Welcome back, bro. <laughs> and then I just have to say too, like Bryce Dallas Howard. Me and Ethan were talking about this on Punch Counter Punch last night. That episode's gonna be either out, you know, in the next probably tomorrow by the time we're recording this. But literally, just give Star Wars to Favreau, Filoni, and Bryce Dallas Howard. That's it. That's all you need. That's literally all yep. you need. But yep. she did such a killer job directing what felt like a really like 
masculine episode to me. I mean, like mm-hmm. with little to no action too. Like, yeah, how can you make a great yeah. episode like that with no blaster fire at hardly at all? There's it so was, much mood and so much atmosphere, and it's so just yep. thick with all of it. And the and the the character it it, it gives like everyone all the scenes and the characters room to breathe and you to really experience it. Even the scenes where he's just walking through what's I guess they have a halo in the Star Wars galaxy. <laughs> I thought the same, same thing. thing. Um, I thought the same, same thing. thing. I, it's funny. I saw that. And I thought, oh, Star Wars did Halo before Halo did Halo on the screen. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, the, the points where he's just walking through there and like there's this kind of cool music playing. It made me ache for what like Star Wars thirteen thirteen could have been because that to me is what what mm-hmm. it could have felt like. Mm-hmm. And just she's so beautifully struck an amazing mood there and did the same thing but in such a different way on on Tatooine when it's kind of that thing where they're rebuilding the ship and yeah it was just a beautiful episode mm-hmm. one thing that I, I felt go ahead sorry. sorry I was just gonna say I felt like after watching that episode all the emotion and everything that that episode caused me it felt like I had high adrenaline from watching an action movie so I felt like I had that boost like we would at the end of Return of the Jedi you know, seeing all that battle sequence, I felt like I had that adrenaline rush with this episode, even though there wasn't that much action in it. And I really appreciated that, that about the episode. Yeah. Yeah. No, she has a way of just really tying things together. And I mean, even the way she directed Pedro or Pedro's stunt double, like you never questioned. It's been a while since we've seen the Mandalorian. You never questioned for one second if this was authentic or not. Like, she totally nailed it. Like, for instance, it's like, yeah, Din has the dark saber, and that's great. Din is still a klutz and has proven and shown time and time again that he is a klutz. He'll do whatever it takes, but, like, he is not, like, he's a cool character because, like, I don't know. I, to me, it reminds me of, like, whenever you see, like, a like a, a farm movie or something, and, like, the, there's a, that one person that has, like, a lot of, like, spunk and like fire and stuff like that like in their personality and stuff but they just suck at their job like they work really really hard at it and like if they fall in the mud like they'll get up and like get back to work immediately and i don't know like that same energy for me just kind of felt like that's who he is like if he gets knocked down he's like getting right back up and charging full force maybe even to his detriment yet again and i just i don't know like she she totally nailed his return it was awesome he, he, he's good at what he does but he's not graceful about it exactly it's like <laughs> i wanted him to be like ace ventura after he hit himself with the dark saber and be like <laughs> 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 you know? like that was my first thought he's like and then it would have been i mean there's the humor around it. it's like oh yeah you have literally the most lig- literally the most legendary lightsaber that exists and you freaking cut yourself with it like it is it just, you know, the subtle storytelling of kind of that mirror, you know, of like him not being experienced with the dark saber and still being kind of clumsy. Like his journey is still happening. He has not fully developed as a, you know, his, his legend is growing, you know, and they, they showed us that that representation was really rad. So now did you was there anything you didn't like, Ryan? Uh, boy, I mean, I would have to get really nitpicky because um, I, I really very much enjoyed the the vast majority of it. Um, the The only thing, and it's not that even that it, I didn't like it. I thought, okay, it's a nice cameo, but it's a bit convenient with the the same X wing guy <laughs> showing up. <laughs> I did think, boy, this guy's patrolling all over the all over the rim. <laughs> that's the one thing that I thought. That's a little. I, I get why I like that guy. I like the character. Um, it was a little too convenient. Yeah, I wonder if they did that, though. Like, I mean, I guess the changes could have been made, but do you think that they would have may have worked on this episode around the time, like even before the... Because uh, remember, there was going to be like a Rogue Squadron show or something mm-hmm. like that, right? It wasn't Rogue Squadron, but it was, you know, like the, the space cops, basically. The and Rangers gonna, of the New Republic. Yeah, yeah, Rangers of the New Republic. Like, do you think they just left that in just cuz or do you think that this might have been kind of finished and they thought that that show is still going to be in production it's like oh we got to we got to weave all this stuff together i mean tough to say it could have been could have been a remnant of that um yeah and like i said it's an it's a nitpick it didn't it certainly didn't affect my enjoyment of the episode it's just something that i was like oh well that's it's a little interesting but yeah, yeah it was just a blip literally 
yeah, yeah, I, yeah, well, good, yeah, yeah, good, good pick, good pick. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. All right, uh, Elijah, one good thing first. Man, there's so much to pick from. I mean, you get I'm one. Sure. Oh, geez, fine. I'm sure I'm going to pick uh, Jake's uh, pick, but the N1 Starfighter. Come on. The, that is – that's one of my favorite Starfighters. I know it gets a lot of hate um, because that whole – and I think I just – I think to quote you, Gabe, that whole Starfighter sequence at the end of Phantom Menace is the worst Starfighter battle in the whole series. Is that what you said, It's Gabe? horrible. It's so yeah. bad. But so the, the I, ship is cool. Like the ship's always been cool, especially like I, whenever think, you would. Yeah, I, I think it gets the. I think it gets that bad tag. I guess is what is what I'm saying by having being the only time that it's participated in anything is that that battle that gets such a bad rap. Um, so seeing that and seeing some love to that starfighter is really cool. I really love how they, you know, took a, a grinding wheel and a wrench to it and turned it into a, a little hot rod, a little rat rod starfighter. You know, a kind of a sleeper machine, too, it, it seems like, too, because, you know, the X-Wing pilots were not expecting that amount of speed out of a 50-year-old Starfighter. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it, that's like that's like putting a, a V-10 in a T-bucket. So that was really cool. Um, I really enjoyed that. It threw back a lot of nostalgia from seeing that very first movie. I loved whenever, like, it's ready and it comes out and, like, the classic, like, Mando Silver, you know. This is yeah. almost like – it's almost like in a way – like a rebirth kind of for him. And, you know, like the first two seasons were like his origin story and here we are now. And it's like a fresh new coat of paint, brand new ship. And it's mighty convenient that she, you know, hogged out the, uh, the, um, astromech port because that's a, that'd be a very com convenient place for a little Grogu to sit behind there. And you know, they're going to do yep. it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm I sure love it's whenever purely coincidence game. Purely yeah. coincidence. I mean, <laughs> how how funny would it be if like he flew past that same like commercial Star Cruiser and saw that same like uh, Greedo alien boy and then Rodian. Yeah, Rod Ro Rodian. Thank you. And then like Grogu would pop up over the top and be like, eh, you know, like and that would <laughs> yeah. that'd be kind of funny. That seems like something that they would do. But whenever they pull it out and he fires it up, it turns over finally. It was like watching. A Fast and the Furious like chop shop scene kind of yep. was what it reminded me of, and like it hit the same. And they pull it out, and then they they turn it over, and it sounds literally like a muscle car. Mm -hmm. Like it, I was like, this is so smart. Like I, I just I loved that whole that whole thing, and yeah, yeah. I, I think rad. it was a, a shout out to like the old movies, like in the fifties and things that were you know like the whole muscle car scene, and uh, even even like American Graffiti, you know, you know, which was very car heavy and. Um, yeah, it very much had that old classic feel of like one of those old movies where like a, a core theme is them fixing up a car and then you yeah. have the maiden voyage. Yeah, no, I, yeah, it was, yeah, dope Star Cruiser or Starfighter, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, what was, was there anything you weren't particularly fond of? Uh, I, I had a couple, I think one of them we're going to get into a little bit later. So I'll save that one. The other one has to do with the same topic, the N1 Starfighter. Where is he going to put his bounties? Oh, pff. don't even start that. <laughs> don't well, even. Obviously, he'll strap him to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. You know, that, that was my only that was my only thought. Like, I mean, I know you could use a ray shield of some sort, I'm sure, to transport something. You know, I have it, a thought on that. And, and, the, and they'll make it work. But I was just to me like, yeah, the Starfighter thing's cool. But I mean, the, we're, we're looking at people like. A guy that's like Boba Fett, like Han Solo, they need to have a a, cra a, a freighter to do their craft. I and have so giving a guy that type of starship's kind of odd to me, but it's not anything overturning. I have the answer for you, and they literally already showed us the answer. Okay. I, uh, yeah. Din Djarin is on his way out of bounty hunting. Yep. Oh, that's what you guys think? Okay. He's not yeah. going to be a bounty hunter anymore. He okay, is going to find something new to do. Like, oh, I don't know, be the ruler of whatever's left of Mandalore. That's what I think, too. So, I mean, we'll see. Only time will tell. But, I mean, because I, I kind of thought the same thing. I'm like, man, this is a, a uh, big jump, like, from having a big ship like that. And I'm like, why are they they're being – there's multiple times, especially with dialogue, they were kind of letting us know for sure that, hey, look, this is different, but it's okay. Like, you're going to like it. 
and they're just kind of like subtly stringing us along or you know subtly bringing us along for small things to kind of like set us up to the idea of him doing something different yeah my i i also had a thought that that what what you said gabe or the next season i it it kind of seems like it it's going to focus more on maybe i mean I don't, I don't know what to say about groku grogu maybe it'll have another significant role in the season but you know and fighting with boba and like kind of what you touched on with in mandalore getting that title back of being a mandalorian so even if he isn't done being a bounty hunter i think for at least the next season he's not going to be a bounty hunter yeah and so maybe maybe they'll he'll have the ship for an x amount of time something will happen the ship will get destroyed and he'll have to get a new ship and then he'll get a ship where he can bounty hunt with or like gabe said he's no longer he's on his way out of bounty hunting we can yeah well here's another thing too like this this kind of struck a chord with me so the person who made the dark saber was a jedi and a mandalorian Anytime we've seen someone use the dark saber, like for something significant, we say to ourselves like, "Oh, that's cool." But literally, I think most people lose with the dark saber. And they kind of alluded like, "Hey, you don't really know how to use it." Mm-hmm. Is it because you need to maybe be force sensitive to like have it react properly? So, I don't know. What we'll, what we'll, we'll, we'll touch on it a little bit later. Like I yeah, want to talk about it, it for our predictions cuz I have I have like Several predictions that I want to get to for sure. That, that's getting mm-hmm. into my prediction too. So I was going to say, okay. Well, yep. there's yep. things that extend like extended universe books and things have brought out about the very act of wielding a lightsaber that the movies never really touched on. But that it's an extremely difficult weapon to wield, and you have to learn how to half be in control and half let it have control in, in a way. Um, I remember even even one book describing how because of the way the power cycles that it has a very strong gyroscopic effect. And if you can't control that, you'll just spin out of control. Um, so, it, it, of course, it could have been that particular lightsaber that works that way. But, yeah, I mean, there are mysteries in, in those different weapons that, you know, you could really have some fun exploring. Yeah, and I definitely want us to talk about our theories and, you know, speculate. Because there's no more satisfying thing, gentlemen. I mean, at least with stuff like this. Where you make a prediction on something... And then it happens. And then you just feel like a freaking baller. Like, I love when that happens. Like, whenever – when I, I had – like, I literally felt a tremor in the force whenever they mentioned Mandalore. I was like, Jake. Like, <laughs> Jake. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but anyways, whose turn was it? Was it still your turn, Leish? Yeah. So one no. thing one thing you weren't crazy about? Yeah, I, I, we oh, already yeah. touched on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn. yeah, yeah. Okay. I Jake. did have the thought when they revealed the ship. It was like, oh, no cargo space. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. no bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he I, keeps I, a bottle in there. That would have been awesome if she'd have been like, yeah, you could jump to light speed without needing a ring. You know, power. And be like, where's the toilet? You know, like <laughs> that would have been funny. But that would have been yeah. very much to his character too. It would have been. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Jake. Uh, so yeah, Elijah was right. He. Stole my thunder, uh, but the uh, the N one <laughs> by far was probably my favorite part. That's been my favorite ship in Star Wars since they first showed it. But um, I guess to and I did I did appreciate the little I think Ryan touched on it, but uh, the little callbacks to Episode One um, with the N one, like when he got in the switch made you think of Anakin when he was a kid. He's like, oh, this is going to be bad. And he hit the switch. And I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but I guess just to be come up with something different was, even though it was brief scene, the destruction of Mandalore, I thought was a really cool scene. I thought they did really good with the CGI on that. Um, that was like, it to me, it did not look fake whatsoever. It looked legit. Um so yeah, I guess I guess that's what I would say was was one of my favorite parts. Even it, was, it was. I felt like an idiot part. after we talked last week because the first planet that we know of that they blew up with the Death Star was Alderaan. So whenever Lige said like, "Oh, it got glassed," you know, whatever, is that what you were meaning, Lige, or are you just mean that they just like kind of took over it and like killed everybody? 
No, so I mean they they pretty much desecrated it with star destroyers. I'm pretty sure is the is the history behind it. Like that's what the explosions were were, but was batteries from a, fl- of a, t- a fleet of star destroyers is what destroyed the planet. If I remember correctly, I haven't looked it up since we talked. But yeah. I think you're right. I looked it up when you said that. I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Yeah. Well, Den Jaren seems to think that there still is a Mandalore to go get baptized in the pits of whatever so see what happens that'd be cool i mean i would love to see them pull up on mandalore and it's just like there's just enough gravity kind of holding pieces like (laughs) you know like roughly together but it's like cracked in half or maybe you know i don't know it's it's gonna be interesting to see what they do but um was there anything you weren't crazy about um no honestly i i didn't get to watch it a second time so the first time i was kind of watching it with rose colored glasses on so I'd have to watch it again if I was going to really nitpick about something. It's like the movie Unbreakable, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you watch it once, and you're like, wow, this is really cool. And then you watch it again because you want to, like, show someone it for the first time because I, re- I watched it with Emma. And I was kind of like, this is still really cool, and I really, really like it, but it it's not quite as, you know, like, I don't know. It didn't have quite the same effect the second time for me, but it's still amazing. I think it's still incredible, you know. So. Tell, tell me if I, I'm wrong, but I think everyone, I, I probably can speak for all four of us here, as soon as those five first five seconds were up and we saw Mando walk through the doors, I think we were all starstruck, and we did, we did not yeah. care what was going to happen li- throughout the whole episode. We were just so much yeah. in awe, and we just, like Jake said, we just had rose-colored glasses on the entire time. I, I, I will say sat back and strapped okay. in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of go along with what Lige just said to uh, whatever episode me and Lige did. Was that three or four? Yeah. It, three, uh, that whatever. was three. Yeah. Three. Um, this episode, I think I, I mentioned something about it in the end. This episode did not feel 50 minutes long. It, it went by so fast. Mm hmm. It was, I, th- I think that just speaks to how good it was, too. Like, to me, it felt like it was a 20-minute episode. Yeah. It felt like, but it, the quality, though, it felt, I mean, it might have been the best quality Star Wars thing we've gotten since Disney acquired <laughs> Star Wars. Like, whenever he's flying up out of the, you know, out of the atmosphere into space and, like, doing those twirls on his way back, like, you know, you see Tatooine kind of, like, doing his thing, I was like... This is so good. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just was. Me- Did you guys notice whenever they were doing the, uh, the Boon to Eve course? Um, yeah. Yep. Like a cycle oh, yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah that yep. was that was dope. I really. I it really was cinema that. quality for sure. All yeah. It was, was incredible. Amazing. It was. Yeah. It was awesome. It was. One neat dope. thing about that whole scene was, I mean, we we obviously know that that's the Boon to Eve race course. I mean, it looks it's so familiar to us. We finally realize that the canyon that they fly through in the Boonta Eve is Beggar's Canyon where Luke spent most of his time flying. Oh, they the showed a womp rat. did you they showed a womp rat. Yep. Yeah, I saw I saw <laughs> I the womp that. rat. It was so cool. I was like, oh that makes so much sense. And then just putting the two together that Anakin flew through it as a boy, probably like Luke was flying through it as a boy was was pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. And like the the wreckage of, you know, whenever Anakin busted through the the ramp, you know, that was that was just a cool Easter egg. I really like they 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 did a really good job of making it. They just respected Star Wars with this, and I think that's yeah the biggest yeah. thing that I've really appreciated. Bryce Dallas Howard with she's directed two, right? She's directed mm-hmm. two or three. Yeah, yeah, she did she did the Mando episode at the like that village that they were hiding in for one. Yeah, for one. did she do one in season two? I thought she did. Probably she was really yeah, good at it. I, I don't remember that. which one though. If she did every every one, every time she's done an episode though, when I see her name pop up, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, literally, just have her do the whole series. God, I swear, if Robert Rodriguez shows back up for another episode, <laughs> he's going to. We, he will. Danny I, I, Danny you, Trejo you will only Rodriguez. work. With, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he'll only work with Robert Rodriguez or Jonathan yeah. Rodriguez, as Jake or said Jonathan last week. Rodriguez. Yeah. So uh, let's spend a little bit of time, gentlemen, talking about some theories. We have a little bit of time left. Um, I'm going to kick us off. And I'm not going to steal yours, Ledge, because I know you probably want to talk about it. But I want to talk about the fate of Boba Fett. Because the more this goes on, there's an old saying, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. And in my opinion, for a character like Boba Fett, 
I think it would be more legendary for him to go out in a blaze of glory. They've alluded, they've shown us him ailing. They've shown us that he is like still, you know, he is a competent warrior, but he is not a spring chicken anymore. He literally came back from the dead, essentially, you know, to our minds. I mean, he didn't come back from the dead. I mean, as the show showed us, but for all this time, like we've thought he was dead, but in the Sarlacc pit, you know, we, we've seen what happened this has happened up to this point. I think they are trying to give Boba Fett a amazing ending and have him team up with the Mandalorian so that the Mandalorian can literally be the embodiment of what we've wanted Boba Fett to be for the past 25 yep. years. Because I'll tell you this right now, Boba Fett has seniority, but Mando is leagues better a character. He's a better character. It's He has a better story. Like, he has a better purpose than just being a, 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 a crime lord. <laughs> so, do you think they're going to kill him at the end of this season? I I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, me and Lige talked about this a little bit today. And the fact that I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them kill him off. Solely for the fact that this last episode, if we didn't already know, it was clear that the Mandalorian is just ten times better show than Boba Fett. He comes into Boba Fett's show and just steals the show completely. It's like Eminem whenever he's featured on a track. No one, <laughs> yeah. no one wants to have him. No one wants to have Eminem around. Yeah. You know, you, you're not lying. I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them kill off Boba Fett because I feel like part of me and Elijah talked about this. I feel like part of the problem with Boba Fett is he's been there and been seen on screen. But there's so much mystery surrounding who he is that it's it's almost like it's hard to live up and create the hype that's around him. It's like his name has been and, stretched so thin, you know, yeah. and, and it's it's taking little itty bitty things to slowly cut that line. Yeah, and I, I feel like like to what you said, Gabe, Mando is the embodiment of the mystery of Boba. Yes, and like everything that has happened to Boba Fett in EU is relatively like, I feel like to the casual Star Wars fan, you know, you go ask my dad what happened to Boba Fett. He's like, oh, he, you know, he miffed his chance to kill Luke Skywalker and he fell into that weird mouth pit in the sand, you know, mm -hmm. and to the casual Star Wars fan, that's what they're going to think of Boba Fett as. So I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on the show for the simple fact there's a lot of casual Star Wars fans out there that are journalists that are talking about it. And, yeah, I mean, the people that are seeing this Boba Fett show have high expectations because it's Boba Fett, but I think are inherently comparing it to the amazingness that we have seen with this new character. And yep. I think if I was Disney, and I'm trying to people-please everybody right now, like what they're doing with this show, by trying to bring in a another wave of fans, you know, to, like, rev be revived, or, you know, like, want to get on board with Star Wars, and it's like, oh, Boba Fett, that's from my time, you know? Like, this will just give them another opportunity to, to think of Din as kind of the new young buck coming up in, into the, the galaxy. And Boba has had his time to shine, even in this season of this show. So the more information we keep on getting and just, like, the subtleties they keep showing us, I just keep thinking to myself, they are literally going to put him on the back of a rancor and he is going to die in a blaze of glory. And it's going to be amazing. And then Disney can focus on their character. Like I have a question. Do, do you think part of the issue with creating or living up to the hype around Boba is how much he doesn't have his helmet on? That's a good point. It's a good, it's a good point and a good question. It doesn't look right. His entire, it's cool. It's a cool look. I like, you know, old man Boba, like for lack of a better word. I like it, but it's kind of, I mean, go look at Boba Fett from the Empire Strikes Back and look at his, the way he looks versus the way he looks now in this show with his armor and stuff. It's not even a comparison as to which one is cooler looking. Well, he went from soldier to emperor practically. I mean, you know, he's got to fit the part. Yeah, but 
it would be way cooler if they literally made him look like how he looked in Empire to me, and even Return of the Jedi. Like, so I don't know. It, that's a that's a good question, honestly, because it it does boil it, it boils down to does Tamora Morrison sell it with his helmet off? Yeah, because my part of my thought was in Mando when he has his helmet off. I mean, it's still it's this is just nitpicking. It's still good. But it takes away from the mystery the of the character. Yeah. The mystique of the character. Yeah. And that's and I why feel Mando like has his me, helmet on so much. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel like for me, that's part of the issue with Boba is you you don't have that because he's got his helmet off all the well, time. And they even made such a big deal about it, you know, in this episode. Like, he met Bo-Katan. He literally met the coolest group of Mandalorians that he's seen so far in season two. And then he's going back to this dying tribe because he's trying to gra- he's trying to grasp grasp onto his ideals of what he knows. Yet we, as the audience, be like, "Dude, it's okay to take your helmet off." Like, you know, mm-hmm. literally the ruler of Mandalore at one point, or the you know the would be ruler Bo Katan, she had her helmet off. Like, she, it, Mama said it was okay. You know what I mean? Like, what's the big deal? And I just I love how that in of itself brings up so many questions for the simple fact of he has his helmet on most of the time, but whenever he took it off, it was a really, really big deal. And it's caused narrative ramifications, you know, and brings even more questions to mind. Ryan, you've been really quiet the past like 15 minutes. Do you have, you have anything <laughs> you want to add to that? Um, I don't think they'll kill him at the end of this season. Um, for, and for, for me, one main reason, this conflict that they're building to at the end of the season is not worth his life. It's not worth the life of a legendary character. They're building towards, you know, they're building up ahead for the, the conflict with this uh, spice cartel, um, which I can only assume is the glitter stem from Kessel. Um, but fighting it out with a, a spice cartel that's trying to, you know, essentially take over Tatooine is not worth sacrificing Boba Fett. Um, so I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he dies at some point. I would imagine it will be in service of Din Djarin for a greater purpose at some point if it happens. So I don't think it'll happen this season. I'd be very surprised. Yeah. I mean, well, the, here, here's the question though. Do we get the spice war in the next episode? And then the last episode is literally the setup for Mandalorian season three X amount of years in the future. Cause I've, I've, I thought the same thing. I'm like, man, this would be kind of petty to like kill him off just for the sake of killing me off. Like, do, are we all in agreement yeah. that Boba Fett has to die though? That's the biggest thing that I think I wanted to bring out. Like, no, I don't think he'd have to die. You d- no. It doesn't mean you have to have a series about him all the time, though. You could make, you could after you yeah. give him a, a season or two or wh- or whatever, just have him be someone who pops up once in a while. There's no, yeah. there's n- you, is it give him appearances and if Mando they or something? Yeah, if they want to give him like some heroic end that has grand, you know, co- repercussions. Sure, I think that's fine, but it's not necessary. I think it's uh, gonna, I think it would do more harm than good. If you yeah. kill off Boba Fett, to be quite honest, I mean Boba Fett's such an iconic character. I mean, we we didn't even know much about him, and people had cutouts of him in their basements. You know, it, it's it's one of those things where he's such an icon. If you kill him off, everything that people hate about Star Wars Disney is gonna come true. You yeah, know, they're gonna be justified. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, and I think too, actually, to that point. Um, kind of like we talked about in episode three, Gabe. I, I, I mean, Lige kind of touched on this today. I think at some point, I, I think you're missing too great of an opportunity to not have Boba and Luke Skywalker meet face to face at some point mm. for some reason again. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day where it's like, whenever Din Jaren is gonna and def, you know definitely show up to see Luke Skywalker and be like, hey. Yeah, I just helped out Boba Fett. He said he knew you, and then Luke be like, "What?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> um. I I don't think that they have to do it on screen face to face. I hope they do because I think it would be a really cool opportunity. But I I, you know, kind of to that point, what you just said, I I do think there's going to be some sort of mention to Luke yeah. Skywalker about Boba or vice versa. It would be funny. Yeah, and I guess for me, it's like I don't I don't know. That Boba Fett has to die. But, like I said before, with my prediction, this town ain't big enough for the both of us, in my opinion. If you want, like, you can't have, 
I mean, maybe you can. I don't know. We'll see. Only time will tell. Maybe Boba rules Tatooine, and some somehow they work in Mandalore, and Mando is on Mandalore or something. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they never cross paths ever again. That's the only way it works, I think. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I think having him pop in every once in a while somewhere, like it would be the most baller thing ever if literally Mando and Boba never see each other again, in my opinion. Like, because it's... We've we've established them together. We've seen them together multiple times. They're gonna fight together. It's gonna be rad. But does it kind of take away from like what again like the mythos and mystique of both of those characters to have them showing up? And it's like, yeah, this is cool, but you know, okay, why don't you guys just you know see a partner? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so well, only time will tell though. But that was a long-winded prediction discussion. Sorry. Sorry about that. Who else's turn? Ryan, do you have any predictions you want to share with us? Um, well, I predict he won't die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm never good at predictions because I'm always just thinking if I was writing it, what would I do? So uh, my, my predictions are, are almost never accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lige? Uh, so, I mean, just to go back to what we were kind of talking about earlier about the dark saber. <clears throat> We obviously see Din Djarin struggling, you know, wielding this this saber. It seems like he does good at first, but then slowly, as he said in the episode, it gets heavier and it gets heavier and he can't. He's At one point, he's even dragging the blade across the floor to pull it up. And at first, when we first see that in the very first sequence of the episode, the first couple minutes, we see him drag it across the floor. And I just thought that that was a power move. I'm like, man, this guy, he's kind of a baller, you know. But then we slowly realize that that's not by design. That those are this is something that he's struggling with, which is why he cut himself. Which is why he cut himself. So, you know, now they're bringing back in Grogu, which is which is neat. I kind of have an issue with that, but I, I I like it at the same time. Wait, did you think that Grogu like was like not going to be seen ever again? I honestly did. You know, I I, I because, are you I, serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I really dude. Did. You realize well, not, he, not not ever again, but not in Mando's timeline. Without, I don't think it, dude. Okay, hold on. We have to talk okay, about this okay, just for a second. Okay, all right, here we go. I'll sit back. Mando's purpose, glorious purpose. The reason why we love him so much is because of the self sacrifice we've seen him go through the past two seasons of his own show. Grogu mm-hmm. is literally a accentuation for his character. It gives him a purpose. And like, come on. Like, there's no way. Whenever whenever Luke Skywalker showed up to take Grogu, we were heartbroken. Never for a second did I think we weren't going to see him again, though. I didn't think we were going to see him either. with Mando. Wow. I thought that he was going to come along across down the line, you know, at like some other point. Like in a point. show or something. Yeah, in a separate show or, you know, he's going he's gonna to be passed to different somatic experiences somehow that's a bold I didn't prediction. think it, that was that's a, that would that, i wish well, i wish i would have known you back then that would have been a bold prediction on the show i would well, i would have said you're I, an idiot no yeah. i'll say i'll say to elijah's <laughs> point though i i don't think that will happen i think he will definitely be still a main part of of mando's show but i wouldn't be surprised if it didn't if it worked out a different way where maybe he comes in for an episode or so of mando but maybe he'll be more of a part of Ahsoka show in mm-hmm. some way. Maybe Ahsoka will, will have a big part in training him. I don't, I don't, I don't know, just something like that. It, because, he, hear me out, hear me out. So think about this. Every time Grogu pops up in Mando's timeline, he's going to have to see who oh, pretty much almost every time that he sees Grogu. If Grogu's still training. And how many times can you wear out Luke Skywalker's persona? on a show. I mean, we're already seeing it with Boba Fett. You, we've proved it. Unless Luke Skywalker was like, you know what? It's actually good. You showed back up because I got to train my nephew. Well, and I feel and like that, I need to focus on that. And that's the thing is that if that's, if he's continuing to train to be a Jedi, it doesn't make sense that Grogu would still be in Mando's life. But if, if, if he's going to leave the temple to be with Mando for a time, unless back, unless, and I think you're going to touch on what I'm thinking. Din Djarin's force sensitive. It's, it's, okay, so this brings me oh. to the other half of, of my yeah. prediction. He can't wield the dark saber because you have to be a force sensitive user to wield it. So I'm thinking one of two things happen. 
I, I don't think the first one's going to happen because of just what I said about Luke Skywalker earlier. Luke Skywalker trains Mando not to be a Jedi, but just teaches him how to use it to win back his planet. Or Ahsoka does it. It'd that's, be cooler yeah. if Luke Skywalker did it. It would make more sense because Grogu's with Luke Skywalker, but I don't Except think that's going to happen. Except Ahsoka was on Mandalore during the Clone Wars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that, that's... I, I, it could go either way. I think it. I think it's more likely going to be Ahsoka because, like I said, you don't want to wear out Luke Skywalker. Yeah. You want Luke Skywalker to be a nice little hint of salt in a season, if yeah. that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that kind of that that was my prediction. I think, I think Ahsoka is going to help Dinjarin learn how to use the dark saber. I think it's going to be her, um, and I think. I mean, that, that was really my main prediction, was come the new season of Mando, I think Ahsoka's going to have a big part in helping him learn how to do that. Um, yeah. The only and question... Then, now, and, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and then kind of about last week, I, I thought that Ahsoka would have her new season might be teased in Boba Fett, but then I got to thinking about it today, and I was like, it doesn't really make sense. She's showed up in Mando. I think her her show will be teased from the next season of Mando. So, anyway. Which, to, to continue on with the whole who's going to train Mando thought, now it makes more sense, I'm not thinking about it, that it would be Ahsoka, because Ahsoka is not a Jedi. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was my thought about Luke, too, is he's so yeah. widely considered by a lot of people as a great Jedi, but I think Ahsoka is more of, an embodiment of Luke, great Jedi. Luke is too young at this point in his life to where he he's going to be very um, very green and not as flexible as Ahsoka would be. He's going to be very new. He's going to be very by the book. I'm sure by the by this time he found the texts. He knows where the texts are. He's read them. He's going to be very to the rules. Well, and I mean, if you're going to make his character make sense. They better do something that's in line with the sequel trilogy, or they better retcon the sequel trilogy because you can't there have Luke go. Skywalker's yeah. you can't have Luke Skywalker's uh, character be inconsistent. I yeah. said it on Twitter: just uh, name it Legends and let it fade into obscurity. Give and, us uh, <clears throat> and yeah. move, move yeah. on as if that was like a what if or something. I do think that they'll have Luke in there. I, I mean, not necessarily a lot, but enough that after his cameo. And they had some criticism about the like the facial technology. They went and hired essentially one of the most renowned sort of deep fake animation experts in the world. Um, so who had posted some of what like a, a version of that that he had done online, and it looked kind of it honestly looked better than what they had done. And they went and hired that guy. So they're into Luke en- enough at least that they're hiring specialists to animate his face. That's a good point. Yeah, and I mean, if you get someone that already looks like him, it's it's way easier. Get Sebastian Stan to play Luke Skywalker. If he can pull off the character. Yeah, if he can, which yeah. it would be interesting. I, I would love to see that because that's the thing. Like, it has to be right. It has to be right, and it ha- something has to happen, whether you're going to make him like the gung-ho. Because really, we, we had a glimpse. The last time we saw Luke Skywalker do something significant um, – with the good Star Wars that we know and love, we saw hints of Anakin Skywalker and stuff that he was doing, you know, whenever he was fighting Vader. So he overcame, he passed the test in that moment, but at that point in time, the dark side is going to be like very, very present, you know, through everything that's happening. So something needs to happen to where it matches what we see later. Or like Ryan said on Twitter, yes, or you just need to get ahead of it now and say, no, welcome to the new Jedi Order. It's Ahsoka Tano and uh, Luke Skywalker. And correct me if I'm wrong, was Kyle Katarn, what, he was not Force-sensitive, correct? Or no, was he? he? W- no, he was not. He he uh, went to the, uh, was it what is it called, the Fountain of the Jedi? Well, he's there on the planet in Jedi Knight too. Like, he's there at the news. Like, he's a part of that. So, literally, mm-hmm. give us that storyline and make Din Djarin, like, the PE teacher of the New Jedi Order. Like, make him do... You know, I don't know. Like, I, th- I I, think they're setting up all these characters for a reason. Like, something has to be coming. Am I wrong? 
I don't think he'll be aligned that closely with whatever happens with the Jedi. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. He's, I think, will be focused on, you know, his own people. Yeah. I did Mostly, see some concept uh, art of, like, an older, like, a teenage Grogu with Mando's... Um, I've, I've seen that, too, with Mando's yeah. helmet. With Well, no, yeah. with his with his shoulder piece. So, like, he's, oh, like, I've in... I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah like, uh-huh. he's in, like, you know, like, yeah. So... I do think if they're, if they're, you know, having Luke in a little, a little bit more, or maybe you know more than a little, uh, depending on how it goes, perfect time to bring in Mara Jade, you know, give us another really, really cool force sensitive character with a completely different vibe. I mean, get Karen, get Karen Gillan to play her; she'd be amazing. Oh, she would would be amazing, Mara Jade. Oh my god, dude! And I'm, man, yeah. How baller would it be if at the end of Boba Fett? Luke Skywalker does show up, and he's like, "Hey, I want to introduce you to my friend here. You know, the one that was at Joe's. No, Palace. they can't. They can't start as friends. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, that's yeah. true. Yeah, they have to be. be, bad. be bad. They have to be opposites for a while before that would yeah. would happen. That's what makes yeah. that whole thing work really well. Yeah, that's true. That's uh, true. Here, here's a question then. At at this point with Luke Skywalker, do you think they'll move in the direction of making? slapping the legends label on the sequel trilogy or do you think that they'll branch off with luke i think gabe you mentioned it just a little bit ago about him training ben i, I mean what's more likely do you think they'll go that direction if it were if, me i just wouldn't ever talk about them again there's no need to relabel them <laughs> if you you know <laughs> it, you know you don't even have to relabel them you could just be like well we're doing this now <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I, it would. Uh, there's such a big opportunity. It's not hard, guys. It's not hard to literally wipe those movies from canon. Because guess what? If if they did that, I would probably like them more, because they fit the, as a what if story better than they do in yeah. the actual canon of Star Wars at this point. It, well, yeah, then we could treat them like fan fiction, and then it doesn't matter that they're crap because they're fan fiction. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, literally what, with. W- with the way that, with as good as Mando has been, and the potential for Obi Wan and what's the other one, Acolyte, Ahsoka, I'm so all of those, for, f- for the potential for those to be as good as they could be, I feel like they wouldn't even have to give an explanation of wiping the sequels. They could just do it, yeah. And people would be like, oh, all right. Literally, these next few shows just have to hit. Kind, of, literally, all they have to do is be as good as Book of Boba Fett. That's all you got to do. I wouldn't hold out a lot of hope for the Acolyte. Kennedy's fingerprints are all over that show. But the other shows have a great shot at being great. I'm really excited for the Acolyte myself. The, yeah, the storyline the storyline is so interesting to me. I want to see what, how they're going to treat a live-action story in the High Republic. Like, Man. I want to see what they're going to do with it. Mm-hmm. So, I, well, I may be like, okay, you know, but we'll see what happens. So, it's a great time to be a Star Wars fan, gentlemen. Um, we're running a little over an hour, so any any I've, last thoughts or any l- last little final discussion? Uh, I have two questions. One, with the High Republic, with that era before, well, when the Acolyte will take place, would that be a lot of, fo- maybe not focus is the right word, but would there be a lot of Sith? No. None. Things going on no. at that time? S- Sith are still extinct you know no one knows that the sith are even existing anymore they've been dead for a long time there this is that show takes place like 200 years before before phantom Phantom menace right yeah i think it's it could be even more than that i think it's like it's like i think 500 years actually before phantom Mm -hmm. menace so yoda's a young man in this in this yeah yoda's like in his obi-wan phase at this point in time like but still, Yoda's like 500 years old during that time. Like, mm. he's he's really old. But I mean, just he's in his prime. He, <laughs> like he's like 650 right. or 700. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he's 900 in in Jedi when he dies. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So there you, there you have it. But anyways, like, what were we saying before? About the Sith. Yeah, the Sith. Yeah, there. This is like the, the Jedi in their heyday, kind of like. Okay. Really hitting kind of like their prime, you know, of whenever they became like even more legendary than they already were. And it's really interesting. Like the whole the, the focal point for the story is imagine if there was a Death Star that was like for good. 
it's really really yeah. cool actually so it's, it's very interesting it's 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 cool so definitely what, what does that mean death star for good so like the beacon of hope or whatever they call it it's a giant space station in the outer rim because the outer rim is in peril at this point in time and literally it is a giant like space station that's weaponized and like has all of these like defenses and stuff like that but it's like a beacon of like hope it's like the whole purpose for it being created is like to do good things rather than bad things it's a beacon of hope to prevent bad things from coming into the core yeah so kind of like i don't know whenever i was like reading the comic i was kind of thinking to myself like man this is like the opposite of the death star but it's like kind of along the same hmm. des- you know not design but that was like the first thing that I thought of was like, wow, they literally mirrored the Death Star in this story. It's kind of interesting. So, I mean, it's not like one for one exact, but that's just kind of what I, you know, I, I think you get what I'm, what I'm, what I'm I think you, you're picking up what I'm laying down. So, uh, so second question is, what do you think um, Din Djarin had made for Grogu out of the best car? Chainmail. Spear. Chainmail. Yeah, it looked like chainmail. Chain that's what I was oh, wondering. Oh, that I didn't makes know that if... would make sense. A ring mail, technically. Yeah, yeah, ring, that yeah, would make a, that would make a lot of sense. I because okay. I, w- I was wondering about that too when I saw the the rings fall down. I was like, huh, yeah. that's that's interesting. I was thinking like a shoulder plate or something like that, but that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So like a, it would be like a body piece. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably over over his torso. Oh, okay. The beauty yeah, of that yeah, is I you did... could wear it under robes and no one would ever know it was there. Oh, and like it Frodo. Protect, it, oh. it would protect against like Frodo, a like Mithril. Blast. Yeah, that's yeah. essentially that's essentially Star Wars Mithril. So I yeah, mean, yeah, hmm. yeah. I have one more. Cool. I have one last question because I wanted to make sure I had my facts right. So the Empire was trying to get their hands on as much Beskar as possible, correct? Because yes, the Death Star was made out of Beskar, correct? No, that I don't know. I don't believe so. No, it okay. absolutely. It was Durasteel. I'm pretty sure. Okay, okay. I wanted to double check because I had read that in like a. There's not that somewhere. much Beskar in the galaxy. That's what I thought. No, I, I was like, I man. No. I was like, man. That, you know. Yeah. Well. Okay, that clears that up. Jake's Jake's. I say like Jake's right now. He's all clackety <laughs> clackety clack. So, anyways, gentlemen, this was a uh, ama- This was such a fun episode. Like, I love you guys so much. No, <laughs> I mean I do, but you get what I'm saying. Can you guys hear me? Am I frozen? You were um, for a second, but you're back now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I said I love you, but anyways, is that what you said? It is. <laughs> I, I said I love you guys. Is what I said. <laughs> um. Anyways, this was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed this. Uh, any final thoughts before we sign off, Ryan? Just excited for what's to come, man. Lige. Same. Jake. Uh, Grogu is going to be an honorary Mandalorian, and he'll be the next Mandalorian Jedi. That oh. thought that thought did cross my mind. I was kind of like, oh. "Well, if Din can't wield the dark saber, maybe Grogu could." Dark saber passes to him. Yeah, yeah. that'd be kind of cool. I mean, especially, but that would that mean Din would have to die, or would that mean that Grogu would have to fight him for it if he's going to no, stick some, to his ideals? Somebody else would defeat Din, and then Grogu would kill that guy for it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's my long-term prediction. Here, here's, that would be dope. What, if I was writing that that scene, I would have someone like defeat Din Djarin, take the, the the dark saber, and they're about to kill him with it. Grogu intervenes, takes it from him, and kills that guy instead. You know, yeah. Oh, so that would be he a doesn't great do it. Yeah. yeah. So he doesn't do it to rule. He does it to save his friend's life. But you know, the the result ends up being that. Ah, man, Star Wars is so awesome. awesome. I just can't wait. I cannot wait Mm -hmm. to see what happens with this whole thing. I mean, we're literally seeing history being made where it's like, yeah, the best Star Wars that came out in the past 30 years was literally television. And we killed it. And then we rolled out the new sequel trilogy on Disney Plus and killed it. (laughs) Yep. So, no, I'm just kidding. It'll probably never happen. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna break our heart at some point, gents. We might as well enjoy what we got. Anyways, uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, everybody, plug your stuff before we go, and uh, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna sign off. Ryan, you go for it. This last adventure comes out February first. Uh, if uh, you're interested in it, you can pre-order it from uh, any bookseller, and um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Lige. Creep to your left on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, also check out Beer Bros East Side on Instagram and Beer Bros East on Twitter. Hopefully have some new content up here very uh, very shortly. We're in the process of discussing some things. 
And uh, as soon as that gets worked out, hopefully we got some new uh, idiocracy coming your way. Yeah, I mean that's all we do here is idiot stuff. So I mean that should that should be all right. Uh, Jacob. <laughs> Uh, Jacob Allen photos on Instagram, J A C O B A L A N photos and for Durko on Twitter, F E R D E R K O. Awesome. I'm Gabriel fast. I do claim to be the wannabe critic. Thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys checking out the show and, uh, until next time, everyone say goodbye. Bye. Toodles. Stay classy. Well, once again, thank you so much for showing up today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, again, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing. I know that's the thing that all the YouTubers do. They're every everyone's asking to sub. The fact of the matter is, is that it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. And who knows, you might even see a video every now and then that you actually like or maybe interested in. Not only that, I do a bunch of stuff, so make sure you check all the information down in the description down below. We got podcasts, we got Let's Plays, we got all kinds of stuff for all kinds of fandoms. So make sure you check that out. I would seriously, seriously appreciate it, and I would love to see you around here more. I am Gabriel Fast. I will always be the wannabe critic. <laughs>